Work till your idols become your rivals, till your dreams become reality. All the sacrifices and hard work come down to one moment, and from that moment, stars are born. It is that time again. You know what to do, so let's go. This is Octagon Hype. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome to another Octagon Hype. I am, of course, still Brian Lacey. And in the corner, it's still Josh Goodchin. Hello, mate. You good? I'm champion, mate. How are you? I've missed you. I feel like I haven't spent enough time with you over the last couple of weeks, Josh. It's getting cosy, isn't it, now, it's mate? Getting We're getting busy. Cozy. We're spending so much time together. But I love it. I love it. We've had nice teas together, some, uh, some lunch. We've hung out. That massage you gave me was exquisite as well, Josh. Where's the Christmas pig gone? <laughs> Where's the Christmas pig gone? Christmas pig. Uh, look, let me tell you what we got on this week's show. Uh, we're going to have another look at that Germany card, the first card of the year. My God, I cannot wait to be cage side again. That'll be February 11th. That is in Munich at the Audi Dome. We're going to break that down. We're going to talk to one of the fighters on that card, Niklas Stoltz, making his return to Octagon. We're going to have a little interview with him, get all the back story of what he's been up to and him anticipating his, uh, his fight against the UK's James Lewis. Uh, plus, we have some fight announcements for you guys and we've got a new section for you in octagon hype are you ready everyone ready this is octagon news give me some news music not that one nope that's the one go go <laughs> i can't see a thing <laughs> welcome to octagon news my name is chub kraken ass and these are the Octagon headlines. First of all, Lozen Kieta is announced on the Munich card. He'll be fighting Samuel Bark. The 8-1 Swede will be looking to take the perfect record of Lozen Kieta. <laughs> Next up, two new UK signings for Octagon. Liam Etebar and also the highly touted Shem Rock join the Octagon roster. <laughs> now news, Justin. <laughs> Just, Justin. Also, you can now vote for the best of 2022 on the Octagon website, link below. Next up, no one told Josh and Brian that everyone in Octagon goes on holiday in January. Sylvia is seen on the beach, Vendi is on a yoga retreat in Bali, Pavel Neruda is lost in the Namibian desert, and Andre Novotny has stolen a barrel of rum. Breaking news. And finally, Stefan Putz is still totally mad. Next up, we go to the weather with Ivana Kisya. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ivana, Ivana kiss you. Uh, that's not, that's not, that's not what we agreed. Make the, make the change. Make the, ch come on, come on. Next up, the weather with Ivana kiss you. In Munich. Whoa, 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 whoa. When I interviewed Ivana, she was from Jamaica. <laughs> I definitely remember her Jamaican accent. It was that's one of the key reasons that she got the job. <laughs> one of three reasons she got the job. <laughs> I can't do it. I'll get cancelled. Come on. I'm not doing it. I had doing a Jamaican accent. Fuck off. Come on, you can't. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I've just reread her CV. She she was from France. Ah oui oui. In, <laughs> in Munich there is a chance of clouds and beautiful violence. Thanks, Ivana. That is it from Octagon News. Don't ruin the illusion. Many people will be tuning in specially for Ivana. You can't just break break the fourth wall like that, Josh. How you drag me into these things, Brian, <laughs> is absolutely beyond me. Well, listen, look, the, the, the news was silly, but the, the news <laughs> is real. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about the two new signings. So we've got two signings from the UK now joining the Octagon roster, one in welterweight, one in featherweight and lightweight. Um, so listen, let's hear first of all from Leon Etebar. Happy to announce just signed a multi fight deal with Hoptagon MMA. Looking forward to making my debut. Rock some heads and knock some people out in the wet weight division. See you soon. 
Great to see Liam. Liam, very exciting fighter. I believe he's eight and two as a record. He's got multiple finishes in under 30 seconds. So this is somebody who starts fast and you've got to be aware of that. Uh, then we've got this young man, Shem Rock, one of the craziest, most amazing stories I've ever heard as far as uh, his journey to this sport. I'll give you a brief sort of idea of, of what he's about. He was on the run for 10 years from the UK, uh, found martial arts while he was on the run out in Malaysia, Thailand, got into it over there, then came back to the UK, ended up going to prison for six months. In those six months, they found evidence that proved that he wasn't the guy that they were after all along and he was acquitted. So then he was released from jail. During that time, he was still competing and training in MMA. He's now found himself at Next Generation with the likes of Paddy, Pimlet, Molly McCann, trains with them regularly. And he is now eight and one as a professional and is looking to step in here and go for the lightweight and potentially that featherweight belt. How exciting is that, Josh? Yeah, that, that story is unbelievable and it probably doesn't get more of a, a hungrier and scarier man than that to have that time that's been lost but he's such a like his energy is fantastic his fighting style is amazing so both these signings when you talk about fan favorite styles the story as well behind shamrock i think we've got potential stars in the making here for the uk which is super exciting um on top of that you will have seen there in the news the very serious news uh that they you can now vote on the best of 2022 josh so i want to do that with you oh, yeah? i want to go through the site through uh, show people how to do it uh, to do the to vote on all of these categories you just simply go to octagon uh, mma.cz forward slash best of 2022 we'll put the link below you can click in it and you can have a little look yourself um josh what have we got first what are the options who have we got in See, first top of the card it's it's uh, the best fighter of 2022 so you've got Lose and Keita, patrick kinsell Carlos Vermola, David Cosma, Mate Sanakidze, and Kike Brito. What a year it's been. Yeah. What a year it has been. And when you look at the ones that are highlighted there, look at the, the championship standard. All of them, apart from Cosma, who's now lost his belt, have held or now hold current octagon gold uh i'm going to just get you to get you give, give us your thoughts for that and again we're not trying to influence anyone our our opinions are purely our own i mean so I, like i'm looking at the fighters that i've watched uh live myself this year patrick kinsell what a finish over lahore um back earlier in the year Mate and a kid's i just love the guy i love his energy he's a well-rounded fighter and a top champion kike brito the way that he took the belt off cosma in such a dramatic fashion, you've got to give a nod to him there. I mean, oh God, that's so, so hard, hard, isn't it? This is, this is why it's difficult. Um, and for me, I think uh, Lausanne Kieta, especially with the way that he took the belt, has really stood out. His record, undefeated yeah. still, is great. Um, but there's so many... Who are you voting for? Come on. Don't so on the for, for me, um, I think it would have to, uh, it would have to go to Lausanne Kieta. For him to only be training MMA for five years, for only to be in Octagon promotion for a year, to have all those fights, the Rishavi fight, the Paradisa fight, then claiming the, the win over Ivan Buchinger, um, I think it's, it's a breakthrough year and he's a standout star and still undefeated. I'm going to choose Mate Sanakidze. Beautiful. Because for him to take to win the belt after having a baby two weeks prior to that, so to go through a camp with a pregnant... Just, just to go through the biology, he didn't have a baby. <laughs> All right, if there's anyone tuning in and thinking that Josh... I know we've just had a very confusing segment where Josh might have been portraying a uh, somebody of the uh, the female uh, orientation. Um, but no, yeah. his, his lovely lady had the baby. And his performance were outstanding. Such yeah. a well-rounded fighter. I love him on in and out of the cage. I think like his energy on social media is his, great. His social media yeah. is something special. Absolutely. And I'll highlight this as well. We'll drop this in because <laughs> the fact is both of the guys we've picked could fight yeah. and they're picking fights with each other. In fact, Mate Senekidze is picking a fight with a guy up a division as the champion and now below. <laughs> and there was a whole thing about um, them dropping, the, the UFC dropped a, uh, or the T-Mobile arena dropped the ball by announcing uh, a fight that they shouldn't have had the heavyweight the return of John Jones and they they put up the, uh, the 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 actual banner on the outside of the arena before the UFC had announced it 
Mate San kids they did they did this with Gustavo Lopez. Oh, it's it's genius. <laughs> it is genius. So look, I, I and again when you look across those, how exciting is it to have them at the, the yeah. top of the pile? So come on, what's next? What's next, Josh? Uh, so next up, we've got Breakthrough Fighter of the Year. Um, I, I'm probably going to uh, not pronounce some of these right, but top of top of it, you've got John Hathaway. That was correct. Well pronounced. Uh, then you've got <laughs> the UK, Vladimir yeah. <laughs> Lengal. Is that right? Lengal, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed Vila. Yeah. Uh, Michael Sheck, and then Ibrahim Hosenpour. Yeah. Good work, mate. Yeah. Good work. Um, now look, I know a lot of had good years. Uh, Ahmed Vila coming through as the underdog, beating two people that potentially people thought he shouldn't have beaten is very good, but surely. Surely there's only one winner here. It's not just about the fight. It's the journey he took to make that comeback. And that's the one and only John, the Hitman Hathaway, right? Yeah. And it was selected by like the, uh, the goat in, I guess, uh, this world of journalism of uh, MMA. Uh, yeah. Ariel that's correct. Huani. Ariel Hawani. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He made, he voted for him as, uh, as his uh, comeback star, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so that, and again, if you want to check out the documentary we did on, on John Hathaway, it's a great piece. You get an insight into his journey and then that just adds everything you need to know. But obviously your opinions are yours. You vote, you do your own thing. Uh, what's next, Big Josh? one, fight of the year. Oh, mate, mate. So you've got Curtis mate, Youngworth too. How do you do this? <laughs> Look at me. I'm all tense because I'm reliving. So, so Curtis Youngworth too. Yeah. Uh, that was in Frankfurt crazy back and forth you've right? got Christophic uh, versus Vin, uh, Kinsel no Christophic versus Kinsel yeah that saw Kinsel claim that title Santa Kids here versus Dakota now that again just the age of both of them I think 23 and yeah. 25 what a what a, a, a high level bout that was brilliant Paradisa versus Kieta yes boom uh, back and forth Kieta again coming through and we saw how good Paradisa is on his last performance uh, amazing go on uh, Youngworth versus Trushek so, Trushek yes Trushek, so yeah. Youngworth announcing him so first of all two votes in this for Youngworth which I get if yeah. you've ever seen Youngworth fight and this Trushek fight was his coming out fight for for Germany so yeah Cosmo Brito. Co oh. <laughs> this, and again, check out Josh's vlog for Octagon 37 because I think it topped, it topped an amazing card and it excelled it, right? Yeah. There was not a dip in that. So I would have to, and I don't know if we're going to agree on this, the Cosmo Brito for me. Now, I'm, I think I'm with you on that. Like the Santa Kids Day versus Dakota fight They're was amazing. So like as, as a as a fan of like mixed martial arts to see them go back and forth and like just to see that class. But for me, yeah, Cosmo Brito because it was such an upset. It was such a. Yeah. It was so dramatic and, and dr dramatic. Yeah. Perfect because it was it was a roller coaster, right? And every time you something happened everybody went, I can't believe it. Like everybody just couldn't believe that. So amazing. <laughs> right next up, KO of the year. KO of the year. Kinsel versus Lahore. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Uh, Montanac versus Skvor. <sighs> Brutal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Kohoop versus Adas. Adas. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's the nasty elbow off the cage. Yep. Yeah. Juracek versus Lahore. Oh my God. Well, Lahore versus Juracek. That's the Lahore yeah. knockout. Yeah. yeah. Unless they had another fight afterwards. No, no, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Buckingham versus Kieta. Oh my gosh. Kieta's. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Paradisa versus Da Silva Maya. Oh. Now this is the thing. You can either pick it on the technical terms of the knockout, like the technique used to achieve that knockout, or the moment that knockout created. So, what, what's your pick? I'm going to have to choose Paradisa because, like we, I mean, again, you see on the vlog, we we met Paradisa the night before. He was happy with that weight class, and he came in just fresh. Yeah, and it was a clinical like with the, that, that right hook. Like, because I called it, like, I felt like you over there calling yeah. the fight. And I'm like, oh, it's an admitted first right hook, just missed. And I'm like, oh, that was, that was sharp. That and the second one lands and it just knocked him clean out. And yeah. I'm like, that for me was so clinical that he deserves, like, he got my vote. And, and technical, yeah. technical and clinical, because if you look at the setup for that and the, the way it connects right on the point of that chin, the, the off switch, the off switch, yeah. it, it was amazing. And how quick it happened. Um, for me, I think I'm going to give a, a second, well, 
It's between Lahore and Keita for me. And again, it's because of the moments attached to them. So Keita, I think he was something like 30 less professional fights than Ivan Booker, something like that, around that number. Yeah. Um, and he came out and did what he did, absolutely blitzed and finished booking it in a way nobody, nobody thought he would be able to do. Um, and then Lahore and that chess match, just that continuous belief against Juracek that he would connect and then finally did in dramatic fashion to earn his spot in that tip sport game changer. So my vote is split between those two. If I had to, if I really had to <laughs> click on one, oh, I would, I would go Kieta for that moment. Next up, submission of the year. So you've got... Um, Oh, you've got to do this, guys. Go go and check the link. Because <laughs> I feel great now. Look, I'm buzzing and thinking oh, about so some good, of these it? fights. Let's go. Uh, you've got uh, Mikolashek, is that right? Yep, correct. Versus Melis. Yeah. Um, you've got Machek versus Silander. Vimola versus Illich. Yeah. Illich. Ligursky versus Kohu. Well done, mate. Yeah, oh, this name is dropping yeah. now as well. Machek versus Lopez and Vimola versus Pasternak. Pasternak, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, oh, wow. So many in those. Uh, I think the Vimola one, particularly against Illich, the way he claimed that light heavyweight title, that was, that was epic. And again, the surroundings. But I think with, and I'm going to jump to me first. I'll let you tell yeah. me what you think. Lopez and his submission of Macek. That for me, it was the speed at which he got it. The control that he had over Macek before he set that up. And then for it to crown him interim title the holder on his debut for Octagon. That that I think has got it for me. I'm with you. I'm exactly the same. Oh. Like I saw I saw it over there, I watched it and I was in awe of, of his top pressure and then the guillotine, the way that he got it on. And like, as I, I might have mentioned it last time, but we had a little DM back and forth because he followed me on Instagram, right? Yeah. And uh, it mentioned how... how... <laughs> Did I just pick that name up off the floor? <laughs> Gustavo! <laughs> Is it not following you yet, no? Gustavo, no fizz! <laughs> yeah, same as you, mate. Top pressure, mate. What ifs? Yeah, forget it. Forget it. Yeah, shift on. Send him a message from me, will you? Uh, yeah? <laughs> it's two words and you can guess what they both are, all right? I'm joking. Right, so the next one is the best walkout. So you've got Christian Eckelin at Octagon 34. Uh, Lozen Kieta at Octagon 31 Carlos Vimola on his throw oh, at Octagon 34 you can get him on a technicality on that that was very minimal walking from Vimola in that, that case um, Kalashnik at Octagon 35 uh, David Cosma at, 30, at Octagon 32 and then Samuel Christofek at uh, Octagon 31 wow wow now there's, there's there's particular highlights and again this shows what effect that has on the crowd on the the whole fight as it were that walk out that energy it is palpable right when yeah. you are there and you're in the midst in the in literally in the boil of the energy that is the crowd when you see certain walkouts like Cosmos music dropping that that Baywatch theme tune <laughs> coming through uh and also there's just the the not knowing what Vermola will do no I had no idea I was there. I went to the technical rehearsals. I was there till about, and because this was the halftime show one as well. So I was there the night before till about 11 o'clock at night. N no sign of a throne. No sign of anything. <laughs> and then Vimola comes out like that. And with the backdrop and with the fireworks. And then you've got that moment, Christian Eklund. And the first one, I was sat next to Frank Mir. And I've talked about it before. Frank Mir grabbed me and was like, whoa. Like literally what, like, and afterwards he was like, how do I not know who that guy is yeah. when he creates that, that happened because of Christian Eckling. So, oh, so many, so <laughs> many, go on, you, you go first. I mean, there's you? only one man coming out on the throne. So that's, that's, that's where that's my money that. is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Joshy Goodchin level. If you're out on the throne, you're in. And you've got to say it, right? Yeah. You've got to say it. You've got to say it. That that, <laughs> that is the most epic walkout. Uh, amazing. Next, 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 next. The best event. The best event. Listen. This is getting hard now, isn't it? Well, do you know what? It's, this one isn't so hard because of what just happened in December 2022. Uh and Octagon 37 has to be. I mean, there were some amazing events. We got four. Go on, give us a list. Frankfurt's got to be on there. Yes, yeah, so you've got uh, you've got uh, Buckingham versus Kier, which is 33. Yeah. Um, you've got then you've got Prague on 30, uh, 30, Octagon 34 with Vermola. 
versus Illich. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's the outdoor um, event. Octagon 35, Kinsel versus Lahore. Again, <laughs> mad night. Renault, yeah. 37, Cosmo versus Brito, where yeah. it was just, again, chaos. And then, uh, yeah, the underground Vermola versus Marpo, the one from the that, poster the, in the, the 20,000 fans. Oh my God. What a year. What a year. What a year. Um, it's, it, event as a whole, as a whole, Octagon 37 was unlike anything I have ever experienced. As an event, as like a festival of fighting, the Prague event, the Illich one, again, that is something I've never seen. I've never seen a crowd respond so much to every moment, every emotion. But on personal experience and just having that memory so fresh in my mind, 37, Octagon 37. I agree. I I mean, like the the Octagon 35 was my first Octagon event. So there's like, that holds a special place. Um, But there was something- Look how he's grown up. There was eh? something in the air at 37 that was just like, can it it ever be repeated? Do you know? So yeah, Octagon 37. Big (sighs) one next bit, big one. The best Octagon moderator, commentator- the ma- presenter the presenter right so um, who's who's wait so whoa, whoa, whoa. nominations nominations uh, the one and only andre novotny yeah, yeah. Okay. you've got okay. robert uh is it kem kemto yeah. kemto yeah yeah um you've got oliver you know, oliver salus legend pavel naruda oh we got the big guns in big there guns. kundasaki oh kundasaki man. and there's this uh this uh not so well a uh, guy brian lacy right you, you don't right. you listen who I, I, who's that don't don't do this. <laughs> don't make me dress you up in something. I'll have another weather report ready before you know it. And we'll have HR involved because I'll come over there and those balloons will not be safe, all right? Let's so that so I'm in. You're in the I'm you're in. in the runnings, man. <laughs> I'm really I am the underdog in this, right? You've got Nafotni, Naruda, Kundasaki, Salus, Robert, and they're all Czech and Slovakian with their big following. But listen, listen. I know what I've brought this this 2022 to um, the presenting world of Octagon has has been classy, right? Let's just take a little look back at the sort of highbrow presenting I deliver. This 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 one award has not changed me a bit, John. <laughs> you to me are everything, the sweetest song that I could sing. Oh, oh baby, oh, oh baby. <laughs> Yes, George. Thank you very much. This year, Josh, I went as Mateus Kohut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You get a you. massage. Thank you. That's his twin brother. He looks the same. <laughs> Can I be one winner now, mate? Yeah, I mean, only one winner. Andre's gonna love collecting that. <laughs> <laughs> when Andre gets that trophy. <laughs> oh dear. Well, if you do want to vote for anyone, not trying to influence anyone. <laughs> click the link below and click the, click the right choice, the people's choice, right? Last one, last one, mate. The best show. Oh my gosh! So this, so you've got these are your nominations. Road to Octagon. You've got the on site. Well, so show. So we're talking about uh, program, like as in as in like the shows, as that, in the shows that we deliver to yeah. you to get you, you know, hyped, yeah. <laughs> hyped, yeah, yeah, about Octagon. Absolutely, yeah. Hit me. So you got Road me. to Octagon. Num- yeah, okay, great, great. great. On site, yeah, awesome. Gloves off. Oh yes. Round zero. Round get zero. Get you warmed up. Yeah. Face to face. Face to face. And then you've got backstage with Kundasaki. Backstage and. That's it. Have you scrolled all the all the way up? Yeah, that's it. This is so be- best best show. Yeah, they they for the best they've not included. We're not in. We're no. not in. We brought two shows to Octagon last year, and so, neither so of them are on the list. The, the vlog's not in. Nope. Hype's not in. Nope. What the hell is going on here, eh? What it's a conspiracy. The hell? This is it. I feel like we're being yeah. This yeah. I'll be speaking to my manager. <laughs> Gustavo Lopez. <laughs> um, well, that's our charge that's for 2020, 2023. We need to get our shows, yeah, up on that list. But look, let's go through the ones because they're great. They are great. They are great. They're good fun. And again, it's the storytelling, the way that they bring the event to you, bring the fighters, make them human, show you the background, the sacrifice, the story. And I think one show does that better than any other, which is the the road to 
Uh, you look at the Javier, Rafael Javier documentary. If you haven't seen it, I'll stick a yeah. link down below for that as well. Watch it. 20 minutes and you, your perception of this man will change, will grow. And uh, yeah, and that's exactly the, the thing. We buy the fighters as fans through the stories, right? And Absolutely. I, I think the guys that, and the ladies that do the work on that show in particular, all the others are fantastic. They are great. They look fantastic. They bring great content. But those that show in particular for me, that is, that is the bar. 100% for, for me as well, yeah. Road to Octagon, like, I, I think back, like, the Kike Brito uh, documentary piece where he's you got his mum there and he's, he's talking about it, going for that championship belt and then he goes and gets it. I'm like, yeah. pumped, yeah. pumped. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, that is the Octagon Best of 2022 awards. Uh, so you can go vote for him. Go vote. There, it, once again, is the link. The link will be below. Uh, go and have a click. Um, write a complaint if you really <laughs> do believe that Octagon hype and the vlog should have been involved in there somewhere but we'll be okay uh and yeah definitely definitely get involved remind yourself how good 2022 was and let's talk about how good 2023 is going to be and we are kicking off the first event will be and it feels like an age josh since we've done an event i miss it so <laughs> much i'm loving doing all this stuff but being there cage side i cannot wait to be in munich and one guy who is making his return to octagon is the one and only nicholas stolzer and we are going to speak to him right now so we welcome we welcome green mask himself nicholas stolzer welcome to octagon hype my brother Thank you. How are you? Thank you for having me, Brian. And um, yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Well, we, we almost had technical issues. Your PC, yeah, Ger I Germany's had, like, broken, right? PC issues. I don't know. Like, I don't know what was, but my phone is like saving me. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we, we've we got you. This is, this is the main thing. And it's so exciting that you are returning to Octagon. Um, you fought Octagon 7. So that was 2018. You've been on a journey since that. And Octagon has too, especially in Germany. It's grown. It's become what it has. And now looking to, uh, to go to Munich, which you'll be fighting on. Um, does this feel like another debut for you? Or does it, do you, do you just, just explain what's it like coming back to Octagon? Um... No, it actually feels like super comfortable because it's a fight in Germany. Um, I couldn't fight in Germany for a long time now. So my last fight in Germany was 2019. Wow. And then before that, it was, it was Prague. And then before that, it was Austria and stuff. So um, I like to fight in Germany because people know me here and the crowd is nice and everything. So it feels like just... No, it just feels comfortable, you know. It's not like like nervous or feeling because it's maybe another debut or something. It's just like actually like another fight and um just happy to be in Germany because my family can come watch and friends can come watch and they all bought tickets and so I'm happy. That's that's exciting. Um also the the the, the events that Octagon have done so far in Germany, the two Frankfurt ones. What have your thoughts been like on watching that in in your home country, seeing that sort of show and that response from the fans? Yeah, amazing. Like, um, I mean, we kind of have a, like a support culture. Like when you when you look at like the soccer stadiums or football stadiums, I don't know how to call it. Or, kind of people watching of American and they say football, they feel friendly or something. <laughs> um, so when you look in these soccer stadiums and you see the support, especially when you look at Frankfurt, there is a culture. Like they are, they have been they have they have the culture forever, you know? So Christian brought it over to MMA and that's like kind of cool to see because like the atmosphere was like in a was like in a soccer arena, you know, it was not it was not like a usually MMA event, you know, it was like, it was like a great atmosphere. And I could just watch it on YouTube because I was still in the States at this moment. But um, friends of mine have been there and a couple other guys I know. And I spoke to everyone and everyone was like, the first show was good, but even the second was like kind of better, you know, like when, when Christian walked out and everyone walked out, Stefan, like, I think he... He proposed to his girlfriend or something? Yes. I covered guess, in yes. blood. Was, covered yeah, in blood. Forget yeah, green yeah. mask, red mask. Red yeah, mask yeah, was yeah. on it show. Was crazy. So <laughs> it's they did really, really good for our um scene and for our like um yeah, for for, for the German MMA 
guys you know it's it's it's, it's great to see yeah it was good to see um and let's talk about this fight so you've got james lewis who debuted yeah. back in bruno um he beat selim Topuz uh, in his debut really impressive finish as well what's your thoughts on him and uh and his style that he brings um i i don't watch him too much to be honest um I, I think I know him for a while because I trained at SBG for a couple of years and I know the Irish and the UK scene a little bit. So I know people from UK and from Ireland and Scotland and Wales. And I lived with John Phillips for a couple of months. And oh, wow. I have a, yeah, I love them together and <laughs> <laughs> crazy stories. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Yeah, so um, I know this, I know James Lewis. Not as personal, like I know him, don't know him as a, as a person, but I know a couple fights and what he did, and yeah, I'm just I just see him as an opponent, but I, it's not like I, I can't even say I watched a fight yet. You know, I watched some fights maybe back then, you know, and I watched of course the Topus fight because it was live there, so I know exactly what happened there. But otherwise, I haven't studied him now much. It's all doing my coaches. We're trying to do it as professional as as possible. You know, I don't watch it. My coach can do it. He's doing the game plan. He already, we already trained a couple of setups, a couple of combinations. So I know what it's about, what he's doing. And yeah, the rest comes maybe after the face offs. You know, sometimes I get a little itch and a little good feeling, you know, after face offs. <laughs> and then I watch some, some, some fights. But till then, it's all I need to focus on myself, you know, because. If you don't focus on yourself and you focus on too much and like all the social media because it gives you so much, you know, because you have to do it now because you have to ad advertise yourself. It, I know it's important you build your brand and everything, but sometimes it gets a little bit too much, you know, and then especially if before fights, you're like, ah, no, I need I need to focus on myself. So if I watch him now too much, I lose the focus on myself. So I focus on me. And then, like I said, maybe after the face-offs. Maybe after the face-offs. I like that. Um, uh, let, let's talk about, because I, I really love your, uh, again, it's your attitude, but also your perspective on fighting and yourself within it. Because as you talk now, it feels like you, you've got a calmness and a stillness and an understanding of the highs and lows of fighting from your experience. Does that come with any, um, like have, have, you, have you ever done anything like with sports psychology or have you had to work on that side of it? Because a lot of the fighters I talk to talk about the fights being 10% physical, 90% mental. And it feels like you, you have a really solid place for understanding the risk and the reward of what you do. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I work, I have a sports, he's not like a specific, just a sports psychologist. He's like, Oh, I can't pronounce the, the, the word. It's hard. Psychologist. To it's like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I have someone, um, but he's not just like for sports, but he worked with a lot of athletes. He actually is from my town, um, but he just works with English um, and American athletes. So he's, he's a really cool guy. And I work with him and he gave me a couple of books I have to read and a couple of stuff. And I did a lot of mental work. Um, and like you said, a lot of fighters now understand this and it is the truth is all mental part because like it is just, if it would be just training, then I think 60, 70 or maybe 80% of the gym of my, of the guys in my gym would be superstars because they training hard. Hmm. And they doing sparring wars. I could like do a, open up a YouTube channel and do the spar wars <laughs> like other people do because the people like they they fight in our gym. I look a little bit damaged because they always try to hurt me. It's like a really a gym full of young killers. But then, like you said, then some people they lose all their strength on the way to the cage or on the way to the to the ring, and you're like. What the fuck? Like, what the fuck's happening? Like, are you good? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you shake on him and you're like, are you good? And they are not there because it's just like they can't put the switch on. And then you have people like who just, they don't even need to be lazy. They can train hard as well, but they maybe not 
always the best, but they can just turn the switch on. They can like, and I had to learn this because athlete wise, when it comes to running or when it comes to going like cycling or my coach, it turns on immediately because it's kind of a, I always have been an athlete. I always played soccer and then tennis and then did athletics and running and hurdles and stuff when I was younger. But when it comes to fight, there's something else because you fight against someone. So you need to break his will as well, not just your own. So I need to understand this. And I think I understand this the last couple of years. And especially um, with reading the Tim Grover series, like the winning books, you know, and then like seeing also the documentary about Michael Jordan that changed a lot because it, it just amazed me how like, can you imagine like how the he level, just right? went in the gym, like the way he thought when everyone was like, oh, I have to go back to the gym because now and then he was already like planning everything, you know, every minute, every like, it just amazed me. And, but I had, I needed these understand, I needed to understand this the last couple of years because I think when you are younger, you have a lot of things going on, you know, and I, I was young, you know, I didn't focus too much on this. Now I'm 30 years old planning to, building my own family, you know, and having all this stuff and going around and you just grow. And then, yeah, I understand this. This is just, it's just a mental part, you know, but also you have to train your body because you have to be ready to turn on the mental part. You know, you turn on the brain. The brain is a muscle as well. It can be trained. So, um, yeah. And you've talked about your team and I always find it impressive because I've watched interviews of yours before where you said basically when you were starting MMA, you had to build your own training. You had to yeah. sort of figure it all out yourself. What was the, what was that? And to say you've come this far and you're as good as you are, that's even more impressive. What, what were the early days like and, and how did you kind of put your training together? There was no one MMA doing. So we kind of like tried to figure out what it is to be, to fight MMA, you know, and I don't know, there's so much stories, like, we didn't even have some room to train, and then someone was like, oh, we can shoot, but he didn't even know how to shoot, and then he shoot me into the wall, and then we <laughs> broke the wall, and the coach was just pissed, and he was like, oh, he's like, no, we stick to fucking kickboxing, like, oh, fucking crazy. <laughs> so it's like, fuck, and then, but I just like the idea of, like, what they said about like MMA and then especially about the ultimate fighting championship at this point, because it was so big already to this point. And I was just like a big fan of all the old school fighters. And then I watched all this and I was like, no, I need to fight this. I need. And then I went to a jujitsu gym, which is like, not my gym, not the gym where I trained um, kickboxing. And then I trained with them a little bit of jujitsu. And then we kind of built it around. And then I got a friend who was doing wrestling. And then I brought him in. And then we wrestled a little bit. And then he said, wow. you can come to wrestling. And then kind of like networking around. And it's still the same. Like in my gym, it's still kickboxing up to this day. We do kickboxing drills and sparring. We have a cage and we have everything for MMA. We do cage work and that stuff. But I do this with my people when I invite them. When I say we do training, then they come. And if it's not like I go to the jiu-jitsu gym or I go to wrestling gym and then do wrestling. But it's still up to this day, not like we are like a full developed MMA gym, you know, where you just can go in and have like, eight classes a day or something and you can just choose, you know, it's just a kickboxing gym and you have just evening classes. And all I do is by my own or we do it. I do it just with my coach with Sasha or I have to say, I traveled also a lot. You know, it's not that I just like stayed at home. You know, I traveled, I was in Thailand, not like years, but like, every year and then like you know, always the January or the whole February or something like in the good months, you know? So, and then I was in Vegas a lot and I trained in Sweden back in the days, the training with SPG, it gave me so much. It developed me like my whole game. You know, I live with John Kavanagh. I mean, he's one of the greatest minds in MMA, you know, like one of the best coaches ever, one of the, coolest guys you know he's just a cool guy to be around and i lived with him and i like i was just like yeah knowledgeable you know you just 
you you pick so much you pick so much up from him every day and i took all this and then i wrote something sometimes i wrote it down and i went home and then i just drilled it you know and then sometimes i did videos and uh, yeah it's, it's it have been always like kind of yeah wow. know, like, it's amazing it. It's amazing because basically you and it, there's this, there's a phrase that people use. If you um, if you want it, you'll find a way. If Always. you don't, you'll find an excuse. And for me to hear that you are still piecing your training together with great guys and great team and good people. Now you've built it. But from scratch to have to go and figure out, right, how do you wrestle? How does that apply to MMA? And then on top of that, as you grow as a martial artist, getting these experiences like waking up in John Kavanagh's house and going to, to train in SBG. That's what a crazy, that like, do you ever stop and think back and go, cause you, we're just talking now, but it's a crazy life that you have led and a beautiful one as well. Right. It's amazing. And this is why I'm saying always I'm, I'm, I'm fucking rich. You know, when like people say, Oh, you need to fight in a game changer tournament. It's so much money. I was like, yeah, there's so much money. I love money. Don't get me wrong. You know, money is cool. You can buy a lot of cool things. You can do a lot of fun stuff, but then money always. So it's, it's not everything you know so um and i'm f rich out of like memories you know like because i have done a lot of cool stuff especially this year with my vegas trip you know so um no it, it's cool and it's cool to talk about it you know it's cool to think about it and it's just like and it's not even the end, you know, like, you know, like <laughs> sitting here, it's like sitting here and I'm 30 years old now. It kind of feels like that this year is like kind of a new start because my girlfriend also starts something new. You know, she's starting kind of a new business a little bit and she kind of starts to be like self-employed. And then you realize that you have to do things different because that's kind of the only argue we maybe have in our relationship is that I say, like, I am a fighter and I'm by myself. I built my brand by myself. I do it all by myself. If I am not doing it. Nobody is doing it, you know? Yeah, true, and true. for her, it's like, if she's like, oh, I, I don't feel well, she's like calling the dog and she's like, she's, she needs four days at home and she still get paid these four days, you know? Yeah, of course. It's for me, it's not like nobody's paying my bills, you know? So even I go to training, nobody's paying the bills. The bills get paid after the fight, you know. So it's, um, so I like the kind of the new start because it will give her like also a new push and will give me a new push because then it's just cool. So it kind of feels that with the new Octagon signing, like with signing Dow and fighting Luis now, it's just like a new start for me. And then it's also at the beginning of the year. So I kind of hope it's going to be a busy year for me. You mentioned this fight. You also mentioned the, the Game Changer tournament. Um, is there any interest to try and get in there? Would you be thinking if you get a good performance, that would set you up for a busy year and also a year which could be fairly lucrative with the, the 1 million euros on, on the line? Yeah. I like it. I like the idea. And I have to say, uh, I think everyone will say it, but like as a fighter, you have to be grateful that they try to put up a tournament like this, you know, that they even try it, you know, we will see how it all works out. You know, we will see if everyone gets through this tournament injury free. It's always hard to say you put 16 people together and let them fight, you know, and then, I mean, you can win and break your fucking arm and then you have a win and broke your arm and, and then maybe out, the yeah. guy who you will, lost to is end up winning the whole tournament and you're like fuck i beat this guy and then this guy's winning tournament i've seen this and we all have seen this you know but i'm very interested my uh before we did the james lewis contract there have been a couple other names for the fight in um in february and my manager already mentioned that there will be something big then they sent me the contract with Louis, said that there will be a game changer tournament that they already asked and had interest in getting me in the tournament. But then my coach doesn't like it anymore. And I said, so I don't like it anymore. I don't think past the other fight. Like, I mean, I can't say I'm interested. Of course, it's nice to have a million. But then also <laughs> you have to be honest and honest. Yeah. Um, outside of the UFC, you will get probably the toughest competition in the game changer tournament. Um, so it's not like you will walk through a bank and get a million dollars. It's will, you know, you have to walk through fire and hell to get something good paid, like a good amount of money. Um, 
So we will see like as a big challenge. But first of all, I have to win against Luis because otherwise it's not even in the horizon, you know, like to think about the Game Changer tournament, you know, because I have to win this fight so badly for myself. One other thing, you talked about finishing this fight in spectacular fashion. What What is your prediction for, for how this fight with James Lewis will go? Uh, yeah, just going in first round and then just put pressure on him, like for a second, first shot intention, because I just need to feel it, you know, I need to feel because, like I said, it's not giving me an extra pressure, but it gives me like, I have to prove it just for for, for myself, you know, because... I know I hurt Benoit in the last fight. I know I hurt Gooden with the kicks in the last fight. And then I know Emir still says up to this day, the knee and everything was shortly before ending him in TKO. And before that, he never got ended up in TKO. Now Jack finished him, but this is another story. But So I have to prove something for myself. And I just need to feel it. So I'm going to do it in the first round. This is the intention. So this is why we train so much, so hard that we can just push the pace from minute one. Just fool. go, go. <laughs> this is what my coach always said in every, in every session. He's like, just go, 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 go. Because this time we really want to bring the heat, you know, like people should remember me and then they should remember my name after this fight and say, oh, ah, Nicholas, yes. Um, you talk about the press there, but I w- will say one thing the the fans response to you coming back and you put out some posts as soon as you'd signed. Um, yeah. And even the Octagon team, the guys around both from Germany and from Czech Republic and Prague, they were so excited to get yeah. you back. Really like genuinely excited to have you back on the roster. And you came and you commentated on one of the shows, which is where we first met. And everybody talked about your energy. They were like, he's back. He's back. Yeah. What's yeah. that been like having the response from that? And also the fans, have any reached out to you? And and what's that been like? That's great. This is like I said, the first time actually I ever felt like, a. I mean, you fight and you say you are a pro and then you fight, you fight, and then you fight on your shows and you get your little purse and you're like, fuck, I can't even cover a monthly rent with this shit. But then I still go on because I fucking love this shit so much. But the first time I really felt about, I felt like a pro because getting a really good amount of money and getting a big fight was at Octagon 7 for me because it was the first time having like photo shooting with like people advertising Monster and stuff. And I was like, oh, oh these guys are sponsored by Monster? I was like, what the fuck? And then like the whole weigh-in show, it was like in a mall. People, like we have been like upstairs and like kind of a, like a balcony, you know? And then we did like a, like there was a big crowd. Or, like there was more people, you know, at some MMA events here in Germany in the in the crowd for the weigh-ins at this time already, you know? <laughs> and I was like, "What is going on here?" And then all the energy and everyone was super friendly, and I felt that from the first beginning. So if I feel that I'm super friendly as well, because there's no other things needed. No, like they looked after me about everything, you know. And then I had a great fight with Jan, and then I finished him, and then. I said, like, in the fight, in the, in, even in the octagon, we said, like, fucking felt so much love in Prague because a lot of people came up and asked for pictures. And then even after the fight, like, there was a fucking, there was so many people outside. I, I came on, my coach said, because <laughs> I was still, like, in the shorts. And I was, like, calling my mom and someone, I don't know, even call my girlfriend. or I don't know who I called, but I was on the phone. And then my coach said, all these guys waiting outside because it's break now. They have like a half, like 30 minute break. They're waiting. They want to do pictures with you. And I was like, and then I've met some other fighters like Pukac and the guys. And I know him because I fought one of his best friends back in the days in Germany. And he said, yeah, welcome to um, (laughs) Octagon MMA. He said, people are going to go crazy if you fight good here. And you see it, you know, because if you, if you look at Octagon and you look at the fan favorites, you look at the guys who are fighting the fighting style is just exciting. If you look at Kader, sure. he's like becoming a fan favorite because yeah. he's just an exciting fighter. And then if you look at um, Christian, he's an exciting fighter. He's brawling. Look at Christian Jungwirt. You know? Yes, he's my like, gosh. Yeah. He's yeah. like just, bop, 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 you know, <laughs> it's like, like a train, you know, when he starts rolling, it's very hard, you know, to stop him. And so 
you see that they really love like the, the 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 fighters, you know, the fighters, fighters. So, and I felt that from the beginning, and then even from the media team and everything, you know, because I think I'm also really easy to handle with, you know, if you ask me something and give you an honest answer, if you say, you know, if you want me to say yes or no, I will say something, yes or no, nothing in between. So it was just cool. And then I have a really good relationship to everyone. Yesterday was big media day with Octagon Germany. They have been here for like a whole day filming me. And um, yeah, it was just like, cool. It's just, it's just good to be back actually. It's, you know, it's, it's just good to be back. It's good to have you back as well. Yeah, and you've thank mentioned, you very much. Yeah, you've mentioned all those names that have made names for themselves from the Pukaches to the Youngworths to the Ecklins, the Putzes. Uh, you're next, okay? You yes, get to walk yeah. out as well. This is your, your chance. You're going up against a tough fight in James Lewis, but you're doing it in Munich and uh, you're returning. It's so exciting to have you back, my friend. And I thank you for the energy. I thank you for the time. And I cannot wait to see the mask and the walkout, hear the walkout music for you returning to action in Munich, Germany on February 11th. Nicholas Stolzer making his return, taking on the one and only James Lewis. What a fight that is, Josh. I mean, we've heard from Paul Smith and also Tom Blackledge, his coach, just how good James is looking. And then you anticipate the return of Stolzer on German soil. That's mega exciting, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it, um, it adds that little bit of pressure for James Lewis, doesn't it? You know, like in the, uh, you walk into a lion's den there. Yeah. I'm so excited to see it. I'm so excited to see James return. And yeah. Uh, and Stolzer and as Stolzer, well. What a yeah. story he has had. What a uh, few years it has been for him. Uh, he's finally going to make that walk. Let's have a look at the card as well. Look, let's just uh, break some of the, the news that is going on. So Kieta uh, obviously now has an opponent, Samuel Bark. Now Kieta is making that long anticipated debut at featherweight the ramifications of that are obviously going to resonate right the way to the champion Mate Sanakidze um, but Samuel Bark he is somebody who it's only just been announced this fight but he fought December 31st on a show in the UK um, he won that fight via decision so he's in good shape he fights at 145 all the time as well that is where he's bases he's also a Muay Thai fighter um, very very good in the clinch and uh, it's going to be a tough tough test for Lozan Kieta but if Kieta if Kieta beats this guy and goes 10 and 0, I think it is, or 11 and 0, then it has to be that champ champ match next, which would be against Matej Sanikidze. <laughs> um, one other change we've got in there, Petrashek, unfortunately, Milos Petrashek has come out of his fight against Pavel Langer. Uh, the twist in that is now we welcome back Rafael Javier. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Go and watch that documentary. Um, but he was supposed to fight on the December 30th card against Lee Chadwick. Chadwick had a back injury, uh, ended up coming out, but now Javier finally will make the return to the cage. And again, an impressive win here for him. We'd see him right in that top spot for that light heavyweight belt. Pavel Langer looking to come back and bounce back from his loss to Montignac. He is a tough test for anyone, an absolute giant of a light heavyweight. Um, and then we're going to work our way all the way up to that Pukac versus Schrober um, feature bout of those prelims a fantastic way to open our first ever fight card in Munich let's go uh, to the main card and let's just talk about a couple of these fights first of all uh, Jungworth versus Di Oliveira so Di Oliveira has fought Christian um, Eckelin before twice now in Frankfurt now he'll fight Jungworth in Munich Jungworth as well as we highlighted in the last episode is going to go on to fight in this game changer tournament the first of which of the rounds will happen March the 4th. So this is a risky fight Absolutely. for him. But the thing I love about this, Josh, is Jungworth was a star in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Then he came Octagon, uh, the first, the debut event in Frankfurt, 33, I believe. Um, and he debuted against Trushik and he delivered a typical bloodbath of a Jungworth <laughs> performance. You watch his walkout on that fight. And it's decent, a nice reception. Then you jump to his fight against Kurtesh, Mate Kurtesh, the second of their fights. You watch the walkout from there. That Trushik fight, even though he's already a star outside of his home country, for me, was the announcement to Germany that they have got one of the most exciting fighters and they embraced him. And when you think about Jungworth and his fighting style and even his mentality to now be having this fight before he goes to fight, for his share of a million euros in the tip sport game changer. It is such a special story. And when you see fighters like that getting the recognition they deserve for what they give us fans, that's magic. 
mate, it's, I'm so excited to see this guy walk out. <laughs> After everything you've told me, and obviously we've seen all, like, like it, it was nominated twice. Would this twice. be your first Jungworth fight? Yeah. Oh my God. That's what I'm saying. Oh know. my God. <laughs> I just, I yeah, thought yeah. you'd seen a young, no. and I say, is, well, I'm that shocked because you remember your first, you remember <laughs> your first taste of young with. You truly do. <laughs> what? Um, no, no, listen, That's cut that how- out. <laughs> but, you, you know, uh, listen, he is something special. And what excites me about this against, this, stop laughing, against the, uh, uh, the Oliveira is the, the way the Oliveira fights. You saw how dangerous he was against Christian Eklund, the, the, the striking in particular, yeah. the body shot in the first, uh, the first fight that led to the, this, the second fight. He's then, and I can't see either of these grappling. This is going to be a stand and bang. Both of their chins are made of granite. Both of them bring the fight. And, uh, if this is going to be your first young worth fight, watch the vlog <laughs> it should only be the young worth fight it should yeah. just be you before this is josh's life before young worth and then after <laughs> okay um then we're also going to uh, mention pa- uh, poppet versus zavada and um, there's some great footage and um, there's a bit where after zavada retired after his stefan puts fight uh, andre novotny and he is a magician he's a hypnotist with his words and also his <laughs> He can see into the future. Uh, and this is what he said after the press conference when Zavada had, um, at the press conference where Zavada had announced his retirement. We hope that this was not the last fight for Martin Zavada. If this was the last fight, then Martin, it was unbelievable. And thank you for your career. Thank you that you was part of Octagon. Those months and those weeks, what we spent together, all together on Octagon Challenge, I think it was something special. It was a hell of a career, but I still believe you will come back because we will go to Düsseldorf and we need you also so you will have to come back I will push you when you uh, come to Düsseldorf we can speak <laughs> <laughs> so he predicted it Josh yep. he predicted it but no one predicted what Popek would do which is call out Zavada when Zavada was commentating on his fight to ask for this and it was in the air whether it would happen and there's negotiations and obviously Zavada moving from that mentality of being retired then to coming back and not against nobody against a rising star it's and I said it at the start work till your idols become your rivals and that is exactly what Popek's done I love it I love it and like both of them in that hometown in the home country like that the roof is going to blow off that place like this Munich is going to be the one like what a way to start the year it's it's amazing and if you can't fly out to Munich because there's only I believe a few hundred tickets left can you believe that our first trip to Munich and there is only a handful of tickets to come and watch it live at the Audi Dome if you cannot do that then you can always watch it and join us live on the stream at octagon.tv forward slash en and you can keep up to date and watch the action live February 11th from Munich so the next episode, we are going to bring you a Munich special. We're going to bring you some more fighters from that card, some more exciting news, maybe some more weather reports, Josh. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to do some interviews with a new weather girl then, I believe. Um, but if you want to uh, stick with us, hang with us and share whatever we do, then do what you do and uh, check out our social media. Like, subscribe to the channel and we will be back. Fight week, fight week for Munich, February 11th. See you then.